Hey guys, it's Danny. Today I'm going to show you 10 orchids that I believe are really, really beautiful and you should definitely give them a chance if you ever see them for sale and if they intrigue you from this video. I'll be honest, this is a sort of a replacement series for Orchids in Bloom. It has a little bit of a different twist to it and each month I want to present to you 10 orchids that I have in bloom and I'm going to tell you a little bit about them. You'll have full care tutorials in the description for the genus. Let's say I present to you a Cattleya orchid, you'll have a Cattleya tutorial down below in the description, a general tutorial which will apply to the orchids you see. There will be maybe a few orchids that don't have a full tutorial just yet because I'm still learning about them such as the Zygo but as soon as I have a tutorial I will put it in the description. Righty, so what I want you guys to do is to leave me a comment at the end of this video after you watch it leave me a comment with the orchid that made your wish list and why and of course if you enjoy the series because I'm really curious to know what your guys' preferences are as well. I think they're all beautiful but hey I'm not objective when it comes to my orchids so want to know if you guys see what I see. Right, so without further ado, don't forget to give this video a like if you end up enjoying it and why not subscribe, I post multiple times a week and it's completely free, but if you're feeling extra about it, do consider further supporting my channel by becoming a member, checking out the affiliate links down below, checking out the merch, or using the super thanks option below my videos. And with that said, let's start with the orchids. First off, we have Brasso Cattleya Hoka Gem Variety Sunspots. For those of you who are not new to my channel, this orchid will be very, very familiar. And this is because it is a very frequent bloomer. If you want to stock your collection with orchids that bloom quite often, this is the one for you. Each time a new pseudobulb matures, there is a flower spike. And those pseudobulbs mature relatively fast. I would say every four months or so, a pseudobulb is completely mature and perfectly able to bloom of course with good care. Another party trick of this orchid is that it produces a super big inflorescence because it branches out. Yes, it is the only Cattleya orchid or intergeneric that I have in my collection which produces a secondary spike. And I hope you can tell there is a branch starting from right in the middle of it. That is apparently heritage from the Brassavola genetics that it has. This is a hybrid, it's not a species. But let me tell you, this trait is really rare. In all of my 10 years plus of collecting orchids, I have never seen a Cattleya orchid do this. But apart from all of these things, it is just a beautiful orchid, very bright yellow with beautiful brown dots. When it first blooms, it's a little bit more purple and the color changes as the flowers age. And each flower can last for up to 3-4 weeks even. I would definitely consider this one if you like orchids to be in bloom pretty much all the time. Next up, we have the Paraphalaenopsis labucensis. I ground this orchid ever since she was a seedling. Now, this is a species, not a hybrid, and as you can tell, a beautiful species as well. Now, this is not a Phalaenopsis, but to be fully honest, I care for it just like I would any other Phalaenopsis. I used to stress a little bit too much with light in the beginning, but now I just kept her in the same amount of light as my other Phalaenopsis orchids and it's doing just fine. This particular one being that it's so long <laughs> or tall, she doesn't fit under my grow light, so I have her just to the side, she receives pretty bright shade but no direct sunshine and she seems to do just fine. For me it blooms once a year together with all of my other Phalaenopsis in the springtime and the flowers as you can see are really special. The petals and sepals are kind of curly or wavy and twisty, it's just beautiful. There is also a fragrance, people on the internet say it smells like cinnamon, I disagree, to me it smells like some sort of smoke. Uh, it's not the prettiest thing but it doesn't have a very strong smell. Definitely the party trick are the flowers, the beautiful colors and the wild appearance. Mind you though, this is a pendant orchid and the leaves will get very very long so you need to find a place for it on an upper shelf, which might be tricky if you're using grow lights. If you give it general Phalaenopsis orchid care, you should do just fine with it. Next 
Next up, we have a flower shop Phalaenopsis. One of my lovely viewers helped me identify it. This is Phalaenopsis Ice Whisper, and I really wanted to tell you her name because I think it is beautiful. And yes, you heard me right, this orchid can be found in flower shops, but I'm sure in orchid nurseries it can appear as well. From a distance, you might say this is a typical white Phalaenopsis orchid, but it is not. Let's take a closer look. Do we notice anything special? If you say the lip looks different, then yes, you are completely right. This is a big lip hybrid. The lip has no yellow or other colors to it because it tries to imitate the other sepals and petals and it does such a good job that you can actually mistake it for another petal. It does seem to have those two, let's call them teeth. So it does remind slightly of a lip, but as you can see overall, it's just a beautiful white orchid all together with nothing to disrupt the white cloudy aspect of it. I think this is a perfect orchid for weddings. It is a newer hybrid, so I'm sure we're gonna see it more and more in flower shops, but I do believe it's better than the typical white Phalaenopsis. Other than that, it takes the same care. It doesn't have any fragrance, sadly, but it can produce a multitude of flowers, as you can see on pendant flower spikes. It can also branch. It is a really productive hybrid, which means we need to be careful not to let it over bloom because these Phalaenopsis can do that. So I would recommend you guys as a friend to really cut those flower spikes. When summer kicks in, I would definitely cut those flower spikes to the bottom, let the orchid have a proper growing season and then promote new flower spikes again in autumn. Next up, another orchid that I have for quite a while. This is Lelio Catlia High Sing Blue Lady Syncorana. It is a hybrid and I don't think it has any other name rather than this one. It is an association of two names. Anyway, this is another flower shop Catlia orchid and I did see it quite a few times. And many of you guys told me you saw it in flower shops, so you don't necessarily need to go to specialized nurseries to find it. Now, this is an orchid with big flowers and the coloration is really, really deep. In the video, it looks like it's a bright purple, but in reality, it really is quite dark and intense in coloration. The lip is absolutely spectacular. Look at that wonderful yellow pattern. It is gorgeous. Should I tell you it's also fragrant? Yes, it has a beautiful, typical cat laugh fragrance during daytime. To me, it smells slightly like lilies but it is a really beautiful classical scent. It can produce multiple flowers, not just two. It depends on the state of stress of the orchid and I can definitely recommend it to you guys because it's not a fussy orchid and I find it to be a pretty vigorous hybrid that takes general cat layout care. And you will find a tutorial in the description. Next, we have Phalaenopsis Penang Girl Cross with Violacea. Again, I don't know if there is a name for this particular cross, it's an association of two orchids, but this is one of my oldest summer bloomer Phalaenopsis, and each year it does not disappoint. Again, the coloration of the flowers is a very dark and intense purple. What I love most about it though is the fragrance. It smells to me very cinnamony and pretty strong. I never had the luck to have a healthy Violacea, but because I have this orchid, I don't really feel the need to purchase that species, which is an iconic species, because I feel this orchid took a lot of good traits from the Violacea. First is the coloration, of course, and Violacea sometimes can be a little bit more diluted in color. This one has an intense coloration, it stands out, it's very floriferous. It smells absolutely amazing and especially if you have it in one of those IKEA cabinets, it will fill the cabinet with its fragrance and it's really easy to care for. It does not take the same care as typical Phalaenopsis, so do check the description for a full tutorial, but definitely this hybrid is worth it and you should definitely give it a try if you see it. Next, we have the Maxillaria tenifolia. 
the very famous coconut orchid. I have to tell you guys, after so many years, I think I can see why the coconut. To me, honestly, it does not smell like the coconut chips that you would put on cookies. It smells more fruity than that, maybe like pineapples or peach. But it has a certain toastiness to it or a certain sweetness to it. Now, the orchid itself is absolutely wonderful and I have a tutorial on it. It has a really unique shape, but the party trick of the orchid is the fragrance. It is famous for its coconutty fragrance, which is not very common in the orchid world. It is also pretty easy to care for if you know a few things about it. And while I present to you only two flowers this year due to some amount of stress this orchid went through, just imagine this orchid being absolutely full of flowers. Each pseudobulb can create two to three flowers. So if you have a really bushy and healthy specimen, you can have an abundance of flowers on this orchid smelling like coconuts. It's just dreamy. Definitely give it a go. I don't think you'll regret it. Next, let's look at some Tilumnias. This is the recent bloomer, Tilumnia Gyrac Flyer Gulls. I don't know how to pronounce it. And it is quite unique in my Tilumnia collection. I know I say that all of Tilumnias are beautiful, and they are, but this one has a coloration that I don't find really all that often in any orchid, let alone Tilumnias. It has a very intense magenta coloration and if you look at the lip you could see in the center it is orange well that makes such a beautiful blend in my opinion very warm color actually and if you put it against a colorful background it does stand out a lot like any tulumnia it does not have a fragrance and really it behaves like all tulumnias there's nothing special about its growth or anything of the sorts other than the color i think the color is wonderful and on camera it looks a little bit washed off i don't know why in reality it is very very intense and i love it if you see the gulls variety just get it it's beautiful and the coloration is not something you see with all tulumnias Next, another Tilumnia. This is my beautiful Big Bang. And look how many flower spikes I got this year. As Tilumnias grow, they can produce multiple flower spikes and of course the inflorescence gets better and better. Now, one thing you should know is that Tilumnias vary a lot in coloration because they are obtained from seeds, mainly not through Mary stems or Mary cloning. My Big Bang seems to have quite a lot of orange-red on the lip and on the camera it looks a little bit orange but in reality it does gear towards a darker red. But just look at it. If you're a fan of yellow, red, warm colorations and of course tiny orchids that bloom a lot, this one is for you. Any Tilumnia is absolutely fantastic but I do really like this particular one. Next up, Phalaenopsis schilleriana. I had to include it because she has a wonderful bloom display this year. What can I tell you guys? Each year it gets better. First of all, look at the pattern on the leaves. Even if this orchid is not in bloom, then you have something nice to look at. The leaves are just so decorative. But the blooms. This orchid is known for many reasons. One is the wonderful bloom show. It is very floriferous and can put on a very big flower display. As it ages, it produces more and more flowers. My top or max this year is 33 flowers, I believe, but it can actually put out more than this. Now the flowers, don't they just look like butterflies? They look absolutely gorgeous. They have a beautiful light lavender coloration, which usually I'm not a fan of, but in this situation I really am. It's just dainty and nice, but also they're fragrant and they have one of the most beautiful soothing fragrance, I would say. To me, it smells like violets 
And this year, the smell was quite intense. Maybe because I had more flowers, but whenever I was in her corner, all I could detect was her scent. In the middle of the day, it was very strong. Since it's not a very sharp smell, I think it's just soothing. And I love this orchid. Yeah, I know I talk about it a lot, but I just really like it. And if you see seedlings for sale, they will be more affordable than mature specimens. I'm not sure you will find actually that often mature orchids. Usually Chilerianas are sold as they are seedlings, but they're worth it. They can bloom even when they're small, not with a lot of flowers, but with enough to bring you a little bit of sunshine. So don't pass this orchid if the price is okay. And if you can afford it, even if it's a seedling, just, just get it. I think you will really enjoy it. And the last orchid we're gonna look at today is the co-host of today's video, the Zygopetalum Lewisendorf. This is the most common Zygopetalum you find in flower shops, at least here in the EU. And it is gorgeous. The coloration is wonderful. I'm happy it translates very well on camera. It is looking really, really close to reality. There's no color distortion here. And the flowers are indeed that beautiful deep brown with the purple that fades into kind of magenta-ish. It's really nice, you guys. Guys. Now, this one has a beautiful fragrance. It smells like hyacinths, but there are other zygopetalums out there that to me smell like lilies, and I'm really searching for those ones, and I just can't find them because the fragrance has a certain spiciness to it, and I really like it, but it's not for the faint heart and it's also pretty strong so if you're sensitive to fragrances maybe this one will not bring you so much joy it does have a pretty sharp scent but it is beautiful and in recent times i've been able to grow zygopetalums pretty well so soon i will come up with a tutorial on these orchids i would just say keep them like you would on cidiums for now and i think you should be pretty okay they enjoy their water, so don't let them go bone dry. Keep an eye on those pseudobulbs. When they shrivel, they need water. They actually prefer to stay rather moist than dry, which I think was one of the things I was not on point with. But now I can grow zygopetalums pretty nicely, so I'm happy about that because they are beautiful orchids and quite unique. As you will see, I have others with other colorations on their flowers, so definitely zygopetalums. They switched from orchids that I will never purchase to orchids that I recommend to you guys. How about that? And those were the 10 orchids that I selected for this month. I hope you all enjoyed them. Let me know which one you liked best. And I hope the series will be a little bit more intriguing and educational for you guys. It certainly is much easier for me to make than orchids in bloom. So next month, as much as possible in the first days of the month, I will come back with another 10 orchids that I feel you guys should give a chance if you find them for sale. Alrighty, so with that said, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great day and I hope to see you guys on Monday. And with that said, have a great weekend. I'll see you next time. Bye.